chainsaw massacre. just outside the small rural Texas community of Newt early this morning. Officers there discovered what appeared to be a grisly work of art, the remains of a badly decomposed body wired to a large monument. Welcome again to uh, another great Q&A with some ultimate super legends. Uh, if you, uh, let's look, he's laughing here, listen. All right, we've got, we've got William Bell, Alan Danziger, and we've got Ed Gwynn right here. We also have Perry Lorenz, who's going to be joining us, and hope your character falls in, unlike other horror films up to that point, with the exception of very few, you went through the throes of death. There wasn't a quick cutaway, and that's because Toby... Hooper, I'm told, wanted to illustrate that death is not easy, all right? So, talk a bit about just shooting what was your death scene, what, the kicking and, and, the, and the riding about, et cetera. And I know as an actor, you know, listen, you go through, you know, you, you do what you do, but did you really, I mean, I guess ultimately, did you really think, now, now how am I going to convulse and die and, how am I going to give Toby what he wanted? Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go. It was, for me, the most fun thing that I did in the movie, right? There's a, a quote, I think it was from Jimmy Cagney, if anybody knows who that is. Anybody? Yes. Uh, no good actor dies quickly. <laughs> so, uh, taking that to heart, um, Toby and I talked about it, you know? He had some ideas, and it was one of the few times in the whole film that he gave me direction. Other times I would ask him, I said, what do you want to do? How do you, coming from a theater background, I said, what do you want to do in this scene? What's this scene really about? Toby just said, do it, you know? Uh, but when it came down to the death, he had ideas, and I had ideas, and we finally collaborated and came up with something that still works today, and it's something I'm still proud of. Um, it's the best thing I did in the movie, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but it was dying. Uh, his idea was the rally. But he, first, I just came out, and Gunner was supposed to come out, hit me on the back of the head, and I fell down. And I said, no, 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 why did not he come around with the hammer, hit me, my body follows that action, and then that's when Toby said, and then when you're laying there, have your feet start riding, kicking on the on the ramp that went up to there. And then he'll have to hit you again, which he did. And the first time he did it, he was so pumped that he hit, it was a rubber 
mallet, right? But he hit me so hard, he broke all the blood vessels in my left eye. And then reached down, grabbed me like I was a rag doll, and just flipped me into this room. The thing was, the room, you saw the door, there was like maybe a foot past the door. So I had to get very small, very quickly, to just disappear. And they slammed, I remember he slammed the door, and our producer, Ron Bozeman, came running back, and Toby came running back, and Ted Nicklau came running, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? So I knew I had done something right. And they, you know, and they were very concerned about the whole deal. So I went outside and had a smoke, I was still a smoker then, and Gunnar and I sat there for a while, while they put things back together, and then we did it again. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But it, it really did illustrate that death is not easy. And it was a harrowing scene because of that, all right? Now next up, this gentleman, Alan Danziger here, all right? Give him a hand, folks. All right. He told me a great story I'm going to share with you, and then I'm going to let him elaborate. That scene where he walks into Leatherface's lair, and Leatherface jumps out. There's a scream, and you said the scream was not acting. That really scared the shit out of you. <laughs> you are correct. I am correct. First of all, how's everybody doing? Are we having a good time? Yeah. Quite a crowd, quite a crowd. Well, the, what Parrish is saying is that for that scene where I get killed, I actually had them blindfold me on the porch before I go into the house. And so I really work myself up into a lather or a tizzy or whatever you call it. And so I had not seen Leatherface or Gunner in his, in his mask and his outfit at all. That was the first time that I see him is when, when I get killed. And so uh, I saw somewhere where it's, somebody had rated my scream as number 16 on the all time best scream. <laughs> And uh, it was a blood curdling scream, and I thought I did great until uh, Toby yelled cut and came over and he said, Alan, that's a great scream, but you gotta wait for him to get into the frame. <laughs> you know, with the, with the hammer. So we had to do it a few times, and as a result, they had a couple of guys pull down uh, my belt behind with my belt loops and pulled me down, so I didn't take a blow that you normally would take with that hammer. You know, and that's almost 50 years ago, I'm still getting headaches, so it, it wasn't an easy game. But the truth of it is that I wasn't an actor, and if you see the movie, you know that that's true. But um, the, the reason I got into the movie is because of the uh, first one that I did, which was uh, Toby's Eggshells. Eggshells. And uh, I met a couple that this movie was supposed to be about. There was a uh, young hippie kind of couple, and it was kind of like a psychedelic type of movie called Eggshells. And it has been inducted into the Bobblehead Hall of Fame in Wis Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. And do you have those at your table? I sale? have everything at my table. There you go. I have my beef jerky. Tagline, we were the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. Perry Lorenz, it's a pleasure to have you on the stage, man. I've never had the good fortune to meet you until now, and it is absolutely an honor. All right. You were the rescuer of the heroin, my good friend, the late Marilyn Burns in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. How did you come about that role on screen? Well, I knew uh, Chip Hickle very well. We were friends in college. In fact, we called him Toes. I don't remember why. But I know him as Toes. Um, and I had, I was kind of a gearhead. I had a shop. I worked on cars and motorcycles. And they were worried about those chainsaws. And so I kept those chainsaws and running. I took clutches apart so they wouldn't actually spin the blade and kill right. anybody. And uh, it got towards the end. And Jim said, well, we need somebody to drive this truck and save the girl. Marilyn, who I went to high school with and knew quite well, beautiful girl. Um, 
And I said, okay, I'll do it. And if you look at the credits, it says I'm a stunt driver. Well, hell, we did that 15 times before we got what we used, and it looked like I made a U-turn. And to be called a stunt driver for making a U-turn was kind of silly, but... Uh, hey, it's hey, incredible, I'll man. It. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, but I had more to do behind the scenes than really in the movie at all. I just knew most of the, the players and worried about the sure. songs and the mechanics of it all. So you were the chainsaw main guy. That's right, man. What a role. Well, what else did you do? I mean, anything else you want to share? Oh, the, where that saw cuts into that meat in his leg there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a part in that. That was a piece of plate metal and a right. plain steak from Randall's yeah. for his pants. But, yeah. So. I always wonder, you know, and, and you're, you know, years ago in speaking with the late Gunnar Hansen, I asked him, you know, why, why did they risk his leg and the plate and the meat? And, I mean, you know, it was a tight shot. It could have yeah. been, been a prosthetic leg somewhere else. Yeah. And I won't tell you what he said, but you know, anyway, uh, I, think, uh, I don't think I told him to tell him that. Maybe he was eating those brownies, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, and down here we have Mr. Ed Wynn. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Edwin, the driver of the 18-wheeler, the Black Maria, all right? He's the guy that Leatherface tried to saw, and Ed jumped out uh, the other side, and they did a bit of a run. He, along with Marilyn, ran like hell. Ed, how did you happen upon that role, and what was it like that day? Or days, plural? Yeah. For me, it was just a day. It was a day, okay. Yeah, just a day, but... Uh... The role came because uh, Bob Burns was an old friend of mine. And Austin is a small town, or at least in those days, and so anybody kind of in the arts knew anybody else who was in the arts. And so Bob and I worked on the uh, Ranger Texas uh, Humor Magazine at UT, and uh, kind of knew each other from that. And uh, I moved to uh, California in 68, and uh, playing music and hanging out and then uh, decided uh, to get in the trucking business. I don't exactly remember what inspired me to do it, but me and my brother-in-law bought a truck. And eventually, <clears throat> rock and roll being what it is, I had the opportunity to move back home. Uh, and uh, fortunately, I had a little business to bring with me. And uh, so I'm back in Austin, and it just coincided with them needing a truck. And Bob called me up and asked me if I, you know, had a day to spare. Sure. And I went and picked up uh, the uh, trailer, because I didn't call a cab. And just, they rented a trailer somewhere to get some truck stuff. Drove out there, picked it up, went to the set, and started uh, the day at about 7.30 in the morning or 8 o'clock. And ran my ass off, as I remember, all the day until the sun set. Uh, I'm open to, to uh, questions. It's probably a good way to get details from me anyway, if you guys have any. I got good ears. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to take questions in the room, but we have joining us now Mr. Wayne Bell. All right. He brought you the, the audio. You, you sure can. Before, before we get to Wayne, just a brief, Terry has another comment. Just a brief anecdote. I got paid $50 a day. I think I was on the set for maybe four days. And uh, we signed away our rights to the Screen Actors Guild. They had now owned that footage. And I thought nothing would ever come of it. I made my $200 and it was over. And then American Psycho got made. And that guy's doing sit-ups in front of the TV all sweating. And the scene that I'm in is playing in the background. And they sent me a check for 1800 bucks. And then a few years later, there's a Bruce Willis movie, and somebody told me the name of it, I forgot, where he tells his kid to quit watching the TV and do his epic homework. Slams the door, walks out of the room, the kid turns the TV back on, and that scene's played. And they only never 1800 bucks. And now uh, there's another movie being made today, and I don't know the name of it, but they're going to give me another 1800 bucks. So. Yes. And we have here Wayne Bell, as I said, audio guy. 
You can thank him for the loud roar and the loud screams and all the, the great audio that was captured. I don't have any voice yet. I can't do that. <laughs> Uh, I'm so glad that y'all are here, but I'm really just glad to see my uh, compadres from uh, making this film. That are still hurting. Right? Right. The, uh, I've had so many people you know, bring me pictures of Gunner, who's a good friend of mine. And, uh, uh, it's a history that we're only here so long. I'm sure it's great that we're all only here so long. It's sad to lose him, Gunner was a good friend. So, uh, and a really good guy. And, and pretty much everybody that I've got to know from Chainsaw are great folks. And there's a lot of squabbling after it, as you might imagine, because of the mafia getting most of the money. But uh, I've managed to stay friends, even with Ed, uh, <laughs> with all of them. And uh, it, uh, really, I think filmmaking, you don't think of it will draw together a community, because generally people come together, shoot a film, they all go their separate ways. But, uh, I, you know, I made a lot of friends at Chainsaw, and those that are still vertical, even Alan, you can't stand up, right? I've only seen you see them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's, it's a pleasure to hook up with all of them. So, the, I appreciate Roy putting this together, and we can all kind of get together, and uh, thank you all for even being interested in our new <laughs> After all of this.
back and try to find it.